it's been high time that I get started with a new airbrush project. So what we got here is uh, I've been wanting to do a big cat for a long time. Uh, it's just some image that I found on the internet that I liked. Doctored it up with uh, the GIMP, uh, which is some free image manipulation software. Uh, if you don't have it, it wouldn't hurt you to get it. Uh, as again, it's it's free. It's open source. Um, I doctored it up a little bit. Took some of the I took all the color out of it. Um, a little bit more contrast, and then I uh, shrunk it down. Put it into my trusty projector. And uh, last night, I uh, went ahead and gave myself a nice little paint by color. Uh, paint by number, rather. Some guys remember those, right? And uh, we're going to start off here uh, some medium gray. Just try to block in some of the points here where the, uh, the dark spots are going to be. Uh, I'm starting off with a, a light gray. Uh, and we're going to just build up the darkness and, uh, and, and build up the shading in in uh, in sections here because it's easier to add more paint than it is to take it off so uh, let's get started alright so I got my paint all mixed up and uh, and a couple little test stripes here on a piece of paper and uh, ever so lightly just putting something down that's exactly what I want to start with I'm gonna start with with the eyes uh, just because once you get the eyes down, everything else kind of falls in place. I'm just not getting the amount of black that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add. I'm going to add three. What the hell? I think that's a little bit more what I was looking for. You can see how I'm doing this. I'm just kind of building it up in stages to get to the uh, colors that I want. So I'm going to take a trip around the uh, piece here. Now it's important to remember at this point to not get too carried away with adding too much detail. Again, right now we're just kind of blocking in the color so that we can get an idea of what's supposed to go where. Here's what I mean by uh, Trying to get the uh, the direction of the fur. If we look over here at the corner of the mouth, really short, short, uh, short hairs. I'm trying to keep little dagger strokes, kind of in line with uh, the direction of where the hairs should be going. We get something like that. That's all we want to do at this point. I just went in uh, with uh, with just straight gray. What is this? Uh, this medium gray transparent, and uh, kind of blocked in just a little bit of little shadows here. Kind of exaggerated a bunch of them. All right, looking pretty good, right? Well, we got most of the shapes all roughed in, and uh, still got a couple more steps to go. We're gonna bring out them highlights again. need to spend as much time looking at your reference art as you do actually airbrushing. You find a little spot, something that you want to do, pick out a little detail, and get to moving. One little tip that I will offer you is when we're doing this, don't go overboard with too much detail. If we look at our picture, our reference photo, we can see exactly how much is in focus. We don't want to have too much detail in the areas that are supposed to be out of focus. Alright, I gotta tell you that tip dry has been a real issue trying to do all these details up in here. And uh, I think I might have figured out what the problem is. First of all, it's winter time 
there is absolutely no humidity in the air and I think that's really exacerbating the problem that I, I think I used that word right um, it, it's really compounding the problem to say the least also noticed that uh, I seem to really have a bad problem with tip dry when I uh, do the quick and dirty method of mixing paint where you uh, put your tip over the front of the airbrush pull the trigger back and uh, push the button down and it seems like uh, by mixing that much air with the paint that it, uh, it really might be what the problem is I don't know so this one I uh, this hopefully by uh, mixing this batch with the uh, this is the gray once more uh, mixing it with the toothpick that uh, I'm gonna find out here that maybe there's more to that uh, tip dry issue that I've been battling I'm gonna go back over this and uh, add a little bit more grays try to get some more mid-tones to it create a little bit more depth now this is a transparent color um, but however we don't want to just destroy all the highlights that we just made so use it a little bit sparingly uh, just again just to create the illusion of depth and uh, after we're done with this we're gonna come back and uh, regain our uh, our blacks our shadows so uh, let's have at it if you look you see these little areas where there's no highlights that's exactly what I'm aiming for I just want to dump a little gray in there where the highlights aren't just to kind of push them push the other stuff back just a little bit remember to keep your distance because this area of the photo is actually supposed to be out of focus so blurry is good you can see now you look way up in here just this little bit of gray how much it's pushed that stuff back and it just forces your eye to think of this as a big round tiger head all right uh, now we're going to uh, regain some of our black tones got the detail black loaded up and uh, we're gonna see if we can uh, get some of these uh, dark spots recovered I got it thinned down pretty good I don't want a hundred percent black I'm looking for uh, a lot of transparency all right well here's the uh, scariest part loaded up uh, some detail white got it uh, ready to go one drop of gray just to tone it down a bit so it matches everything else that's going on in here and now for the fun stuff, right? Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, yeah. when you're doing the whiskers keep in mind that uh, real cat whiskers aren't straight so uh, they got a nice little gradual arc to them and there's a bunch of them so uh, just do something that looks close and there you go